This video is a response to a question I get way too many times over on Twitch, and that is what advice can you give me to win more battles in the new PvP matchmaking mode, or the mode that I call Arena 2.0? So with that being said, I'm going to go and explain what I use to give myself a better advantage in all of these fights. And I want to let you know I'm giving away an Obsidian six pack in this video. All you need to do is leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below with your gamer tag attached. Let's get into it. I'm going to try and keep this video as universal as possible. This means that it's going to be useful for sloops, brigs, and of course, galleons. So the first step to starting right happens before you even go underwater and start your matchmaking session. Make sure you are supplied up and you have pockets on you. Having pockets on you means having food, wood, cannonballs, and any other throwable or accessories on you before even entering a matchmaking session. If you eliminate the need to get supplies on you as soon as you enter the battlefield, that gives you more valuable seconds that you can use to work on positioning. And that's the next thing we're gonna be talking about. So if you don't know, when you enter the battlefield, you will be going head to head. And by that, I literally mean nose to nose. So you're gonna to wanna to get the other boat in your broadside as soon as possible. If you're on a galleon, prioritize raising the sails and slowing your boat down. So the person you're going against starts coming towards you. If you can slow your boat down, get an angle where the side of your boat is facing the front of their boat, you'll be in a sweet spot to start the battle right and get the first shots. Some well-placed chain shots can crack all three masts, two masts or singular masts, depending on what boat you're going against, right off the start, which will give you a significant advantage and almost always secure a win right off the start. This moves us on to our next tip. The first thing you want to try and do is immobilize your target. Crack those sails, stop them from moving, and get the upper hand position-wise. Ideally, position-wise, you're never going to want to find a situation where the side of the enemy's boat is going directly into the front of yours. That is a worst-case situation. You're vulnerable from that state, you cannot fire back, and all you have to do is take cannon shots until you can turn to a tactical position to return fire. You could argue at that point you'd send a border over, but in my mind, the last thing you want to do is send someone off the boat while you have a rain of cannon fire coming towards you. If you've positioned yourself right, immobilized the enemy ship, and got some good supplies on you, the next step is where you start really going into the offense and sort of finishing up the battle. Once the enemy is immobilized, it's at this point you're going to want to start moving onto things like blunder bombs, fire bombs, and cursed cannibals. The use of these items are very situational, but a base basic one that's sort of universal everywhere is using a anchor ball. If you're in a situation where the enemy is immobilized, dropping that anchor could be the nail on the coffin that you need. Since that is rather situational at this point, you do not have to unload cursed cannibals and you can just stick to straight cannibals. Focus lower decks on any boat you're going against. Don't aim for the top of the boat, aim for the bottom. The lower you hit, the closer to the water, the more water is going to come in. Prioritize top fire if they are returning cannon shots on you, but even then, that'll be very unlikely considering they're focusing on getting their boat moving again. As well as that, if you've mastered the positioning, they won't be anywhere near you with their cannons anyway, and you'll be either in front, behind, or just out of the way of large cannon fire. So of course, the next step is unload cannonballs on them. Once that is done, you can move on to what is probably going to be the final step in the end of the battle. That is sending things like borders or just ways to stop them from bucketing. Sleep balls work well, grog balls are effective too, and ballast balls work really well if they are on a big boat like a galleon. Either way, while they are struggling to bucket the water out, just stop that process by any way you can, whether it be borders, cannonballs, or anything else. Blunder bombs are really effective, as if you do hit a well-placed blunder bomb, it'll actually knock the people repairing the holes off the holes they're fixing. Assuming all of these things are done right and effective, that will 99% of the time secure a sink. These are the steps to success, in my personal opinion, and they've worked for me in every single battle that I've gone against. Of course, you'll still find situations where you're going to run into a crew that's just better than you and will beat you in a fight, but hey, at the end of the day, that's just a learning curve, right? This also works in the alternative. If you are defending, do the same thing. Get the positioning, immobilize them, and sink them pretty promptly. But all in all, if that doesn't work and you're really sweaty, just jump on their boat and sail them outside of the circle. That's a really quick, effective, and supply-free way of sinking your enemy 100% of the time. With that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you do want to see some battles live in action, feel free to check me out on Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash sin, S-Y-N-N. Or hey, 
just want to hang out, get some giveaways, feel free to do that too. On the topic of giveaways, I'm giving away an Obsidian six pack in this video. All you need to do one more time is leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel and comment down below with your gamer tag attached. Have a good day, night, evening, afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are around the world. And I'm going to catch you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.